Hey guys, what's going on today? Uh, today's a little bit different. We're doing a video on a little Max. This is one of my wife's uh, Max trucks. And uh, the other day, we were uh, out having a good old time on one of the uh, county gravel piles and uh, I was cutting some donuts with it and uh, the wheels just took off. I'll show you what that looks like here real quick. <laughs> that was pretty cool, huh? So yeah, what happens is we can go to the other camera here and when that happens, this is pretty much what you end up with. You really don't have to take anything off. Um, you're going to have to pop these two screws out and just slide that outer stub shaft off to uh, replace it. And we're going to do that real quick, so it shouldn't take but a minute, so let's get it done. Um, here's <clears throat> here's a little guy's tire right here. I'm just going to kind of use that as a jack stand. I'm going to show it under there, and we'll just pull this body off real quick. And this is exactly how it came from the gravel pile. It hasn't been cleaned or anything. Just dirt and dust. It's not mud or anything like that. And it actually been uh, it's been a couple weeks since you saw the tire fall off. I just haven't had time to get to it. So we're gonna go ahead and knock this out real quick. So we're gonna need to pull these two screws out, and those are a two and a half millimeter. So we'll just go ahead and buzz those out real quick. And these are also pins. They're threaded pins, is what they are. Uh oh. I have to pull the wheel off the side. Yeah. So see what you got. Are threaded pins. You see there? That's what they look like. And uh, the bottom one is going to be a little bit longer. It'll go down here. So I'm just going to set those aside real quick. And I'm going to go ahead and take his his other front tire off so we have some more room in here because these tools are kind of on a big side. So let's go ahead and take his his front tire off here real fast. There we go. I'll pop that off there with an eight millimeter. Now we have a little more room and what I can do is leave this in, in view for you guys and use this one for the front jack stand. Alright now that we have that off of there we just go ahead and pop this knuckle out so it'll just come right out and I'll just lay it right there. Let's take a look at the broken broken stuff here. Move that back. See there. So I took everything out, stuck in the bag so I wouldn't lose it. So what happened is that bearing in there is gone. You see there? That bearing is gone and this one's pretty much this one's still free but the seal is all knocked out of it and that seal is hollered out. You can see the ball bearings in there. And that bearing, it just, it has no race whatsoever. Or it has no, no ball bearings whatsoever, just the outer race is left. And this has happened twice on this Max right here, which is my wife's. I mean, really, they're all ours. I mean, we just, she calls it hers, and I call this one mine. This is my Max, the one that I normally run. And it's happened on this one, too. And uh, what happens is, a quick little review. Not really review, just what I think about the truck. The Max is a freaking great truck. I love it. I love the X Max more because it's just sheer size. It's huge. You see something that big flying through the air and climbing stuff. It flies, to me, it flies better, lands better, bigger footprint. These tend to hit the ground. They'll kind of bounce and flip and roll, and which is cool. But um, anyway, the Max is it's tougher than the X Max. It's a tough truck. I've had this truck for well over a year, like a year and a half. And this is the only thing that we end up breaking on it. This, uh, this out this stub shaft it's the only thing that we end up breaking and what happens is just you're running and running and running it I don't have time to tear all these down because I have a lot of trucks I have like 20 something trucks and it gets overwhelming right so what happens is that bearing will seize up in there and the motor's got a lot of power and it's it's, it's torquey what happens is that bearing seizes up well guess what that motor don't care just twist it right off is what happens so this is not like a design flaw or a weak link I guess you could say uh, it's just pretty much uh, error on my part I need to you know tear it down more often and you can take and you can take a little single edge razor blade and pop those grease seals off of there clean them out brake cleaner real good a little dish hose them out not hose them out but blow it out with air or just let them dry in the sun and then put some fresh grease in there and that'll that'll help a lot 
like you can feel this inner race is it's gone it's wobbly as heck so we're gonna pop some new bearings in it real quick go ahead and put a new uh a new outer stub shaft in it and hobby shop was holding these for me it got my name on it it's part number 8996 i don't really need uh the inner the inner cv i'm just going to use the outer there's nothing wrong with the inner at all so i mean i don't see any point in changing it um i just like to save parts and that's i absolutely need them there's no point having a bunch of halfway used up parts just finish it off then change it so i'm just going to put the outer on and it's really really straightforward so i'm sorry i'm talking a little more than usual this is a different truck and i just kind of want to explain a few things um I'm going to go ahead and find the bearings I need to replace this real quick and we'll get those bearings changed out. Okay, so I had a bag here of 2.0 stuff. It just It's got diffs in it, it's got ring gears in it, it's got bearings in it, it's got push rods in it, pin, all kinds of stuff, right? So I bought that from a, a buddy of mine. Uh, it came with a Revo 2.0 that he bought and he didn't like it. I bought it like new. It still looks like new. But anyway, it had a fast eddy bearing kit in it for that 2.0 and the bearings are happen to be the same part number or whatever. So. I just basically matched them up. I see here, I just basically, here's the old one. I just basically matched them up, so we're good to go there. I need to check, I think this bearing is a little bit bigger real quick. I need to pop that out of there and take a look. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see if we get this other bearing remnant out of here. We're just taking, push it right through like that. Yeah, see that bearing is bigger and it's gone. It actually is still intact. It's just completely locked up. It won't spin at all. So now let's find a bearing in this kit that will match that one. So, so these are gonna be our new bearings going in to this knuckle. So we're gonna go ahead and pop those in real quick. So front bearing will go in just like this. And it just pushes right in there. Back bearing obviously goes in from the back. And it also pushes right in. I'm gonna take this needle nose and just push on it. Raise this a little bit. There it is. And push on this uh, other side here. I think it's in already. Yeah. Okay, so now our new bearings are in. I'll be rolling smooth. And we're just going to actually put everything back together. This is a very simple part to change. If this happens out in the field, it's really, really quick. All right, so now when you go to put this back on, if you look at the end here, there's going to be a line. Let me show you any other camera. There, you see that line that goes straight across? There's also going to be one on the inner. All you do is line those up. If it's not lined up, it just won't go on. See there, it went right in there. If it's not lined up, it, just, it won't go. So really, you just find where it lines up and goes right in. And there we go. We got it right in place. Okay, now we'll just put our knuckle on the way it came off. Now, if you guys remember, I mentioned that the lower pin was a little wider. Or a little longer and that tells you that this area here is going to be the bottom it takes a longer pin so it goes on just like this so we'll take and put this right through like that there we go fit like a glove and then we just line all this stuff back up and that's all there is to putting this bad boy together so this pin here will go on the bottom, like that, and we'll take our little hyper tough here and run that pin back in. Guess what? Don't strip it. That's all you got holding this little guy together. Okay, and then this upper one here. Take and put that in there. There we go. And we got that all back together. And now all we got to do is just put our uh, our wheel and stuff back on there. Uh, let me find my little cross pin. All right, so apparently I lost the cross pin for the wheel hex. And where it goes is it slides right inside here. And then you just put your, you line your wheel hex up over it. And then all you do is put your wheel on and your, your lug nut. So I'll have to get one of those, and um, other than that, this baby is good to go. It's all fixed up, and it's ready to run. So, so anyway, guys, I hope that helps you out. Um, I'm gonna get my wheel. I'm gonna run to the hobby shop, see if they have one of those pins, and get that taken care of. But I hope that helped you guys out. I um, haven't covered the Max very much because I've never hardly broken it, 
Um, so we're going to eventually get to the max and everything like that. Uh, and all the vehicles I own uh, laying here next to me. You have one of my Revos. There's one of my 2.0s. And uh, the only issues I have with these really is I pull the pivot balls out of the upper A arms in the front. But I think I have a fix for that. So we're going to see if we can do something about that. So anyway guys, that pretty much wraps it up. You guys have a good day. Have fun out there. Uh, God bless guys. And uh, take care. Bye.